edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received their dead by resurrection, some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. <clears throat> they were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were killed with the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfection. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, 
in the new world, when the Son of Man shall sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be lost at the last to his church, to his tradition, 
to orthodoxy, which means right believing, holding fast, as the epistle said today, when it talks about the Old Testament saints, some were sawn in two to, because they would not give up their faith. Many were driven into the wilderness and wore the skins of animals and lived in the wild like animals themselves because they would not give up their faith, because they held firm to it no matter what came up against them. We have these images in the church and these images, of course, in the holy icons where we see the saints themselves portrayed. We have these images for a reason. Because all of us in our own way are called to enter into that struggle. No, thanks be to God. Let's pray to God. None of us will be sore, sold in two for our faith. None of us will be facing the fire for our faith. May that not happen to any of us. But if we were called, if we were called, if we were called to do that, would we? And that's a great challenge. How far out on a limb would we go for our faith? In these times, how far out on a limb will we go to say, no, no, this teaching that you're producing, these things that you're saying aren't true. They conflict the Holy Scriptures. They conflict the teachings that we've been handed down. How many of us would do that? Because in this way, even though we won't be killed for it, we will suffer more if we stand up for what orthodoxy teaches. Now, I'm not talking about the customs. Certain customs we have might be the customs of certain nations. That doesn't matter. But some things, again, are indutable, cannot be challenged, are held by us firmly, and the ways of the world will not teach us anything different. You know, we think in our times that we have science, we have all these explanations for things, as if this is the first time that's ever happened. But in Roman times, they had their science. In Roman times, they had their explanations for things, and the church often challenged them. That's why we have so many martyrs. Because the church challenged them and said, no, this is not the right order of the universe. No, this is not the way things were meant to be. No, these things don't lead to salvation. And first and foremost, the one who will cause us to suffer the greatest is our Lord Jesus Christ, who tells us in the Gospel today to take up our cross and follow Him in the way of His cross. To be a Christian, to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and God and Savior, the only Savior of the world, is to make a statement that will be offense to most people. Not just people who don't believe in Jesus in other countries, but people right here and now would say, how can you say such a thing? That's your truth. But we say, no, there are some things that are simply the truth, that cannot be argued against or if they're argued against or argued falsely. There are some things that just stand like a rock in the midst of the storm, and the church is built on that rock, which is no other than Jesus Christ. We are built on the rock of Jesus Christ, on the faith of Jesus Christ. And when the storms come against us and assail us, we do not collapse. Yeah, we may suffer damage. We may be beaten down. We may be driven into whatever wilderness there is, and the wilderness sometimes can be right here in this place. The wilderness that separates from the world. But the church itself will remain, and if we are faithful, we too will remain, come what may. We could easily have chosen to be built on the foundation of sand, and the storms come, and what happens? The house falls. To be an Orthodox Christian, to be a believer, to be right believing, means to stand on that rock, which is Jesus Christ and His Church. That's what it takes to be a saint, and that's what all the saints taught us, in their different ways, in different times. Some gently, some so gently, I think of St. Seraphim all the time. And some fiercely, like St. Vladimir, who baptized the whole nation. And some in between. And some as lonely people in the wilderness, just like St. Mary of Egypt, they were all different as I began. Their personalities were all different, even as ours are. But we hold fast to one thing. There is no God, but God the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is no Savior but Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save us all. There is no other salvation. That doesn't mean those who don't believe may not be concluded in that saving grace of our Lord. We don't say things like that, we don't know. But we do know there is but one Savior. 
And we do know ultimately there is but one church, the right believing church. Now others who may not technically be part of the Orthodox Church may also be believers, of course they are. We often say, we know where the Holy Spirit resides in the church, but we cannot say where he is not. And we know that he travels elsewhere because the world is full of holy people, even those who are not of our faith. But when it comes to us as Orthodox people, we can say and must say truly, this is what we believe. Remember, on the Sunday of Orthodoxy, this is the faith that upholds the universe. We cannot speak to things that we don't know, and we certainly can't judge those whom we don't know. God alone knows. Many of us may not pass the judgment test, and many of those who are outside may, but that's God's business, not ours. What we can say is this faith is the true faith, handed down to us through Jesus Christ our Lord Himself, our God and Savior, through the Apostles, we celebrate one of those today, the brother of our Lord, St. Jude, St. Jude, who is the patron of lost causes. We know that our faith has been handed down to us by generations from our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, some of whom may well be saints and shining in the glory of heaven, some of whose names we may never see inscribed in the church calendar, but nonetheless are very much as much saints as St. Alon, or St. Eleutherius, or St. Saint, Saint Holy Apostle Jude. The wonderful thing about being saints, or called to sainthood, is it's always constantly a challenge. A challenge toward mercy, a challenge toward righteousness, a challenge toward kindness, a cha challenge toward love. Each and every one of us is called to meet those challenges in the way we best can. And if we do meet them in the way we best can, which is always greater than what we think we can do, if we do meet them, then someday too our names will be inscribed, if not in the church calendar, in the very walls of heaven. Because that's what we're called to be. All of us saints, each and every one of us, holy and called to holiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you.
Metropolitan of, Ameri of all America and Canada, local tenants of the Albanian Orthodox Archdiocese in America, and of the New England Diocese, may the Lord God remember him in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto the age of salvation. the government, the civil authorities, and the armed forces. May the Lord God remember them all in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, unto the ages of ages. For the sick and the suffering in our midst, those in the nursing homes and hospitals, and all who have passed our intercessions, especially remembering the servants of God, Marie, James, Jim, Gloria, Diana, Luke, Jane, Doris, Mary Ann, Mary Sr., Shirley, Gael, Patricia, Walter, Camilla, Lucinda, Mary, Michael, Rita, John, Andrew, Sam, Liam, Cody, and, and John, Nancy, Edna, Elizabeth, Robert, Costa, Jim, John, Thomas, John, Daisy, Sandra, William, and Costa, and for all those we hold in our hearts, may the Lord God forever them all in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. For all who suffer for the earth of God's faith, and for all who suffer for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the Lord God forever them all in his kingdom, always, now, and ever,
all things of which we know and not know, for all the benefits bestowed upon us will manifest for unseen. And we thank you for the synergy which thou the angel accept in our hand. We understand by the thousands of archangels and hosts of angels, the cherub and the seraph and six wing many eye, who soar aloft, torn in their opinions, singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying.
trust you alone and shall take away your iniquities and cleanse you of your every sin. O God, save your people and bless your inheritance.
May the Lord God bless us all. 